Hello and welcome to another video in my Fundamentals of Orchestration series. I've spent some time introducing each family of instruments within the orchestral brass section, and so today I'll be looking at arranging melodic material for those instruments. I've composed a few short melodies that will help in my demonstrations, and as always I'll be using sample libraries from orchestral tools. Let's get started. I'll be focusing primarily on the standard orchestral brass instruments, so that includes trumpets in C, horns in F, tenor and bass trombones, and tuba. Here's a review of some of the material from the previous instrumental introduction videos, with the range of the brass section as a whole displayed. In some ways, the brass section is the most difficult for many young composers and orchestrators, as there are many things to consider when arranging for this group of instruments. In general, young composers and orchestrators tend to give both horns and trumpets too many high notes for too long of a duration without realizing just how difficult and how tiring that can be. If you look at most 19th and early 20th century orchestral works, the brass section typically plays the least among any of the sections, and there are several reasons for this. For one, with the exception of the horn, brass instruments are more piercing, both dynamically and timbrally, than either winds or strings, and tend not to have as wide of a timbral range. Therefore, composers often reserve the brass section for particular moments, so that the brass timbre is not overused. But another reason is that playing high notes on these instruments is more strenuous than on winds and certainly on strings. And so to take advantage of those registers, it's a good idea to let the players rest their lips in embouchures before or after these moments. It's also worth mentioning that these instruments sit in a very different overall register than the woodwind family. You can see here that other than the trumpets, the brass section is really made up of mid-low, tenor, and baritone instruments, whereas the woodwind family is mostly mid-high to high alto and treble instruments. So when arranging music for the brass section, it's very easy to get into trouble by voicing everything too high overall. That's not to say that trumpets and horns can't play high notes, but again, when and where you write in that range is something to consider. One of the very first things that a conductor might look at when studying your score is the horn and trumpet high register notes. Let's look at this very simple melody, one that from a purely technical standpoint, any of the brass instruments would be able to play, placed in an appropriate register, of course. Let's say that the original register is shown here with a low note of G4 and a high of F5. Keep in mind that I'm using the note naming system where middle C is C4, but I need to point out that this MIDI piano displayed here uses the cue-based note naming system where C3 is middle C, so apologies for the discrepancy and confusion. Based on this reference chart, both trumpets and horns should be able to play this melody in this octave. Here's how it sounds on trumpet, first at a low dynamic level. At this dynamic, there is a regal quality to this melody, and the trumpet seems to be in a solid range, albeit certainly bordering on high. But you don't hear a strained quality, so I think this melody fits well here. Let's listen at a more forte dynamic. At this dynamic, it's a bit brighter and has a more commanding presence, but similarly sounds great for this range of the trumpet. The high F is bordering on the highest register, but unless writing for beginner trumpet players, there shouldn't be any issues with either low or high dynamics in this range. On the other hand, let's hear the horn in F at this register. This particular melody sits at the very top of the horn's range, and thus much more difficult than on trumpet. Professional high horn players should be able to manage this, however you can tell even with the sample library rendition that there is a slightly strained timbre. It definitely helps that the notes in this highest register move around mostly by step, and other than the first two notes there are no large leaps that would otherwise make this very challenging. Low horn players might find playing this passage softly to be much more difficult. Let's hear how it sounds at a louder dynamic. <laughs> 
still perhaps a bit strained and probably the wrong type of melody to give to horns in this range. The horn has a brilliant timbre in this range and this melody doesn't seem to fit that aesthetic. If you want this melody to sound lyrical and expressive, I would consider transposing down. Let's try by a fifth. Now this melody sits in a great range for the horn. It will still sound high, but not strained. It should work for all dynamic levels and is in a perfect register for solo passages, as well as horn tutti passages. Let's hear how a solo horn at a medium loud dynamic sounds. Returning to trumpet for a moment, let's look at the melody in the new transposition, down a fifth, now starting at C4. Even moving down just by a fifth, we hear a significant timbral difference in the trumpet sound. We're still in a strong part of the trumpet's range, but there's a more focused, intense timbre, and just a bit darker than the original transposition. Here's what that sounds like. In this transposition, we're actually at the very highest register of the tenor trombone. Let's hear what that sounds like. Again, it's a bit strained as we're approaching the highest notes recommended for orchestral writing. Though to be clear, professional and advanced tenor trombonists make this register sound great, and can even go higher than this. But when writing orchestral parts, this melody does in fact sit at the very highest part of the range, and you have to ask yourself if there are better options, like horns or trumpets. But if we move down in transposition by a fourth, so that would be an octave below the original, we're in a much more comfortable part of the tenor trombone register. This would be a great register for a powerful forte or fortissimo melody, that could cut through an orchestral texture. In this octave, let's return to both the trumpet and horn. Because the lowest notes of the trumpet are somewhat unfocused and weaker, I probably wouldn't use trumpets for this melody in this octave. But plenty of orchestrators have written for these lowest notes with some success. Here's what it would sound like. Horn in this range works perfectly well, although we are starting to get into that darker timbre of the low horn register. The low G in particular has a slightly darker sound. I'll move this melody down yet another fifth, so now it starts on the C, an octave below middle C. Sticking with the horns, we're now in that solidly dark timbre, a really focused sound, which is great for more ominous or suspenseful melodies. Here's what that sounds like. The tenor trombone in this range is quite strong and has a wide dynamic range, so this melody would sound great both soft and loud. Here's the tenor at a forte dynamic level. This register is also still high enough for the tenor trombone that we don't really have to worry about a lack of agility. If it were any lower, however, we want to be careful about how quickly we move between notes. In this range, the tuba is also very capable of carrying melodic material and has a warm and intense timbre, making it a nice option. 
I'll show just one more register with this melody before moving on. Here's that melody starting two octaves and a fifth below the original, so the starting note is C2. In this range, the tuba has a much stronger, darker timbre, and you start to feel that heaviness associated with low brass. But we haven't quite got to the extreme low end, which has a tendency to be a little muddy. And lastly, instead of the tenor trombone, the bass trombone would be capable of the melody in this register, and would provide a slightly brighter and more piercing alternative to the tuba in the same octave. I'd like to shift now to a discussion on combining brass instruments on melodic material in unison and in octaves. If you watched my woodwind melody video, you might remember that I discussed treating these combinations of instruments almost like a simple formula. The same can be said for brass instruments, so let's take a look at this melody here. It's in a nice range for horn or for trumpet, but let's listen to it with horn first, as I think it fits the instrument well. So to understand combinations of timbres, you first need to identify the solo timbre, and in this case the timbre of the horn is somewhat noble or regal sounding, it's a bit warm and rounded. The simplest combination would be to add a second horn here. You'd then be emphasizing those very same sonic characteristics, all the while adding some strength and intensity with having two players. The only thing that you'll lose is potentially some of that warmth and expressiveness that comes with a solo instrument. I'll add two more horns to that now, which will create an even stronger sound, with the ability to cut through an orchestral texture. With four horns now, you'll also hear some of those brassier, edgier sounds as the higher harmonics start to accumulate, so it will sound a bit more aggressive. I'll now move this melody up by a perfect fourth, we're now at the very top of the horn register, and four horns in unison here is very common in film and cinematic music. In reality though, it's very difficult for all four horns to play effectively in unison this high up, especially for low horn players. There's always a chance someone will crack a note. Of course, with sample libraries, you don't need to worry about that. In writing for live performance, however, you might consider changing this orchestration to something more practical. One option would be to have the two high horns together and the two low horns together an octave below. This would certainly work in a thicker orchestral texture where you don't necessarily need to worry about balancing everything perfectly. But if this were in a more exposed texture, I think you'll find that the timbral differences between registers means that the octaves aren't quite balanced, but here's what that sounds like. If you're going for a powerful sound, which is often the case when writing for 2D horns in this register, then perhaps just using the two high horns plus a trumpet in unison would be better. The trumpet will be in a great part of its range and will add the clarity, power, and bright brassy timbre to the horns. This melody would also work well with just trumpets. I'll remove the horns and add a second trumpet in unison. Again, by adding a second player of the same instrument, you reinforce some of the strengths and timbral qualities of that instrument, but you lose a bit of the warmth and intimate qualities of the soloist. In this case, the melody becomes a bit more commanding with a brassy, more focused sound. <laughs> 
Let's bring this melody back to the original transposition and add back in two of the horns. This is a great register for a 2T brass unison melody. Because of the lower register, it's less bright and has some of that grit from the low trumpets. Let's hear one more version of this melody, this time with two tenor trombones added in octave below. When you start spanning multiple octaves with brass instruments, pay close attention to how the octaves are balanced. And I think I need just two trombones to balance against two horns and two trumpets because of where these instruments are placed registrally. And related to that, it's a good idea to think about how the timbres of each octave will blend together. For instance, if your intended sound is to be powerful or bold, you want to make sure that each instrument can achieve that sound in the octave that they're in. In this case, that shouldn't be a problem. So here's a new melody, one that should work nicely with brass, specifically low brass. Oftentimes, if you're arranging pre-existing music, you don't always have control over transposition and melodic register. So let's say that we're given this melody, and we can move it up or down by an octave, but we can't transpose it to a new key. This melody has a range of a tenth, so that's fairly large. And also note that we go down to that low F below middle C, which is too low for the trumpets. If we really wanted trumpets on this melody, we could transpose the whole thing up by an octave. But then we'd be starting to get near the top of the trumpet register, which might not exactly fit this melody. I think I want something a little heavier and darker sounding, so I'll stay away from that piercing, brilliant high trumpet register. Another option would be to break this melody into two parts, let's say right about here. So we could start the phrase with trumpets and then switch to horns halfway through. Let's hear how that sounds. Let's stick with that arrangement, but add in trombones an octave below. To balance the two trumpets in the upper octave, I think two tenor trombones will work nicely. This melodic line fits the tenor trombone fairly well, although if you recall from my introduction to low brass video, I discussed slide position difficulties, especially when moving quickly between position six or seven to first or second position. So right here we sort of have that issue, but advanced players should be able to play this even at a reasonably fast tempo like we have here. The trombones will add that low brass power and heavy timbre that to my ears fits this line well. I'll demonstrate just one more version of this melody, one without trumpets. We'll instead focus on just the tenor trombones and horns, plus bass trombone and tuba. I'll similarly break this melody up into two halves with the horns and tenor trombones in the higher octave and bass trombone an octave below. I'll remove the horns halfway through as it's starting to get a bit low for them, especially with such an agile gesture. I'll also remove the low octave briefly. Once again, it's getting pretty low to be this active. But I'll add bass trombone back in on the last measure, and also I'll add a tuba an octave below just on the downbeats to add the extra power. So here's what that sounds like. So I think that's all I want to cover in this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'll save my discussion on homophonic brass arranging and chord voicing for the next video from piano to brass. If you're liking these videos, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and leave a comment below. I really enjoy hearing from all of you. See you next time.